record this. Um, and hopefully you can all see my screen there. And this was um, a link I sent out in the uh, email at the weekend on this particular hand. And when this hand was played, <clears throat> um, no one made four hearts on it. And I just want to look at how it should be played. So in terms of the bidding, it goes one heart, one spade. And then East, you've got a, a close call. Um, you've got four, uh, 14 points, but you do have a very nice heart suit. So you could bid two hearts or you could bid three hearts, which you could show more like a medium hand. If you bid three hearts, you'll likely end in game. If you bid two hearts, you may stop short of game. But uh, anyway, you should end up in a heart contract on here. And this was the um, email link as I sent it out to you, that South leads the king of spades against a contract of four hearts. And if we just look at this from the east point of view, but taking into account uh, the west hand as well, what I'd like you to do on this hand is to start off by counting your potential losers. And what I'm going to ask you to do is assume that you're going to win this first trick and then draw trumps, which will actually take three rounds to draw, how many total losers will you have? So I'm going to launch a poll in a moment to say that if you win this trick and then draw trumps, which will take three rounds, how many potential losers will you have? Have a moment to think about it. And here comes that poll. How many potential losers does Declara have? <clears throat> Share the results with you. Let's have a look. And the majority here, just over half, 52% went for four, but 38% said three, and two people said five. So let's have a look at it and see what we think. Well, <clears throat> I phrase that question in such a way that by drawing trumps first, three rounds of trumps, you won't have any trumps left in the West hand. And so that will leave you with one spade loser, no heart losers, but you'll have three diamond losers, three potential diamond losers. So yes, I agree with the 52% of you who said you have four losers on this hand. Now, those of you who may have thought you've got fewer than four losers, yes, what you're planning to do on this hand is not to draw trumps right away, but to uh, play diamonds as soon as you can. And you're planning to rough one of the diamonds in dummy. And if you yeah. can rough one diamond in dummy, you'll only have two diamond losers and will make your contract, will make your contract of four hearts. Now, as I said, when this hand was played, this was actually played um, some few years ago, but I made a note of the hand because I thought it was interesting. This is the hand, and this was the suggested bidding on it. And if I scroll down to the uh, travelers, you can see that most people were in four hearts, um, but everyone in four hearts went down. The only positive scores were those who stopped short of game who made nine tricks. So no one actually made 10 tricks on this hand, and yet it should be relatively straightforward to do it as long as you remember your, uh, your loser. So what we're going to do on this hand is not draw trumps right away, but try to keep our trumps so that we can rough a diamond. And this is how it should go. You should win that first trick and don't play um, a heart, but immediately play a diamond. In fact, if I click on the GIB link, it will say, say that if you, um, if you start by drawing trumps, you should be defeated by one trick, but you can make your contract if you play diamonds. You can also make it if you play a club, but that doesn't really advance your cause because um, you play a club and then play diamonds. So the way to make this contract is to play a diamond you're deliberately going to lose that um, trick, 
Now, if I bring up the four hands at this point, if <clears throat> North is seeing declarer Lee Diamonds here, uh, he should definitely be thinking, what's Declare up to? I think he must have some diamonds he's planning to rough. So North should probably switch to a Trump. OK, but you're OK. You can win that one, play another diamond, which North will win. North can play another Trump. OK, and now you've still got one Trump left the ace, so you can rough your last diamond with the ace, and you've got rid of one loser. After this, all you need to do is get back to your hand and draw trumps, perhaps with a club, and then draw that last trump. There's only one trump left, and you'll make all the rest except for uh, one spade now. So that's how it should have gone to make 10 tricks. Um, but as I said, when it was played, no one managed to do that. OK. Any comments or questions on that? Do interrupt me. Um, you'll have to unmute yourselves. So I, mean, I think when I clicked on the GB, GIB button earlier on, yeah. um, I think a heart lead brought it down. Yeah. Uh, Good. Thank you. Yeah. So I was going to say that. But uh, if South uh, on this hand actually um, leads a trump, then it can be defeated because the opponents will start with a trump. And if they keep playing trumps at every opportunity, when they get in with diamonds, it can actually be defeated. Now, on this hand, I would not suggest that South should lead a trump because although it turns out to be the, the best lead on this hand, it's not um, necessarily the right lead. In fact, leading a singleton trump can be a very poor choice. If you think about it, if you, for example, got a singleton heart, it's quite possible that your partner might have something like the queen and two others. And if you lead that suit, lead trumps here, you will trap your partner's queen if they happen to have it. So I think a much more normal and attractive lead is the king of spades. But as, as I said, it happens to be that leading a trump and continuing with Trump is a way to defeat this contract. When it was played, um, however, no one led a Trump. So everyone led the King of Spades and the Ace of Diamonds. So everyone had a chance to make it. So that's really what I wanted to, um, to talk about today, to talk about um, playing in a suit contract. And it's something I've talked about many times, but people are obviously not always finding the right line. Generally, count your losers from the point of view of the hand with the longer trumps, um, but taking into account the high cards in dummy as well as your own hand. And start on the assumption that you will draw the opponent's trumps first. So if you can, make a plan about involving drawing the opponent's trumps first, count your losers, but then see if you can avoid any of those losers, for example, by discarding them, or by roughing them. And if you are going to rough them, it may be that you have to delay drawing trumps. So, um, you know, that's a sort of very standard technique in declare a play in a suit contract. Let's have a look at another one. And here's one where, let's look at it from South's point of view. You open one spade and it goes, uh, sorry, sorry, it starts off pass, pass, one spade, pass, pass, double which is for takeout. You, I would be happy to bid two spades here, even though my partner is very weak. They did, couldn't find a response to my one spade. Then it goes three hearts, three spades. So North has got something for me in spades. And that ends the auction. And uh, let's have a look at this actually from West's point of view. We can look at this from the defense's point of view. And the normal lead here on this hand <clears throat> would be the ace of hearts. So you lead the ace of hearts. Um, and sorry, if we just go back to this point here, and down comes dummy. And you, well, you can see dummy is very weak there. As predicted, they've only got less than six points there. But they do have some kind of spade fit for their partner. So you win that first trick with the ace of hearts. 
And what should occur to you as a defender is that declarer may well have um, one or some more hearts in their hand that they are planning to rough in dummy. Because of that shortage in dummy, because there was only a doubleton heart in dummy, you should think about, well, it's quite possible, you know, you started with four hearts, maybe your partner had four hearts. If there were two in dummy, maybe declarer started with three hearts and they may well have a loser that they're planning to rough. So this is a time for the defense to switch to a trump. Don't, I see a lot of people on a hand like this, they, they maybe cash their king first and then play a trump, but that's not the right defense. The right defense, which the computer will show you if you click on the GIB link, is that you must switch to a trump now. And your, your idea is to get rid of those trumps in dummy so declarer can't use them for roughing. So the way to defeat this contract is to play a spade. You, it works out equally well on this one for you to play the ace and then another one, or you could start off with a low one. Um, but if you play the ace and another one, you're getting rid of those uh, two trump from dummy. Now, from declarer's point of view, if I switch back to declarer, declarer actually does have another heart loser here. So their only hope to get rid of it is to uh, try and uh, rough it. So they will play another heart maybe, but you can get back in and draw that last trump. Okay, and now declare is left with the nine of hearts, which will be a, a loser. So whatever happens now, uh, declare can try cashing their winners. But unless something very magical happens, they'll be left at the end with uh, one, uh, well, one club loser and one heart loser. And they'll be held to eight tricks on that one. So if you look at it from Declarer's point of view, Declarer starts off with a loser in spades, three heart losers and a club loser. And he'll lose all of those if the defense um, uh, uh, draw trumps draw trumps and prevent him roughing any hearts in dummy. Again, if I go back to this, after this first trick, when West has won the ace of hearts, if I click on the GIB link, you'll see that, yes, you need to play a spade there to defeat the contract. Any comments or questions on that? So again, a fairly um, straightforward one that involves delaying drawing trumps so that you can uh, rough in dummy. Let's have a look at another one where it starts off, East bids a heart, you overcall a spade, there's one no trump, two spades, three clubs, and suppose you end in three spades, and that is the final bid, and let's suppose the opponents lead a heart, the queen of hearts. So we're going to think about how many um, losers we might have. Um, and again, think about it two ways. Think about it that you draw trumps first and think about, and then think about how many losers you might have. So I won't do this as a poll. There's one more poll coming up, but here we'll just count our losers uh, looking at the suits together. And you can see, well, we're missing the ace of spades. So that's one loser there. We've got two heart losers. So that's a total of three losers. In diamonds, we've got the ace king and a loser here. So that's one more loser. And we've got a club loser. So we've got um, five possible losers. One, two, three, four, five. But of course, we can avoid one of those losers by roughing a diamond. So this is another situation where we're going to delay drawing trumps so that we can rough a diamond. So Let's see how it goes. If the opponents start off with hearts, they can win the first heart. I suppose they take the second one. And if they play a third one, well, of course, we're going to rough this. Um, we want to rough this one high just in case. So we'll rough with the uh, eight. We've got the eight, nine, ten. They're all high except for the ace. So we'll rough that one. That wins. And now before we draw trumps, we'll play the diamonds, we'll play the king, win in the shorthand, over to the ace, and rough the last one. And because we've got good trumps here, 
in, in both hands, we may as well wrap high just to, there's no risk of an over -up. And if we just bring up the four hands now, we can see we've got rid of that loser. Now all we want to do is draw trumps. We'll just play out the trumps. The opponents will take their ace at some point. Uh, if they play another diamond, we can rough that. Draw that last trump. And at the end, we're going to lose a club. <clears throat> but we'll make our nine tricks here. So that again was fairly straightforward. It's all about roughing a diamond there and avoiding losers like that. By the way, I was asked an interesting question uh, this week about counting losers. When we're counting losers as declarer, you're looking at both hands together and you're trying to assess where you might lose tricks. Now that is similar, but it is quite different from what's called the losing trick count. The losing trick count is something you use during the auction, during the bidding, to evaluate your hand once you find a trump fit. And then you're only looking at one hand. So although it's a similar idea, it's not the same as counting losers as declarer. So what we're talking about this evening is counting losers as declarer. And it's different from the losing trick count, in case any of you are confused by that. Any comments or questions on that? Let's try one more. And here again, it goes, uh, it's a competitive auction and we end in uh, three spades, one heart, one spade, one no trump, two spades, three clubs, three spades. And let's assume the opponents lead a heart. And let's have a look at this from declarer's point of view. And again, I'm going to launch a poll with a similar question. Um, and I want you to think about there are, there are missing cards you've got in spades and diamonds, for example. We need to think about how the missing cards are likely to be divided and how many potential losers you have if you start off by drawing all the opponent's trumps first. So let's assume the opponent's lead a heart. How many potential losers do you have? If you draw the opponent's trumps first, all the opponent's trumps, how many losers are you likely to have altogether? And that's assuming the most common distribution for the missing suits. All right, so take a minute and see if you can work out how many possible losers you have if you draw all the opponent's trumps first and they are divided, both the trumps and the diamonds, in a normal way, if you like. So let me launch. Okay, let's um, end that there. And I'm going to share the results with you. We've got a fairly um, divided response there. The majority have said four, 43%, and 30% said five, and a smaller number said three, and one person said six. So let's have a look and see what we think about it. So let's turn our attention to the trump suit to start with. Well, we have nine trump here. We've got six and three. So the opponents have got four. And with four cards missing, those are most likely to be divided three and one. And if that is the case, you've probably got one spade loser. So we count that as one spade possible loser. Um, we've got two heart losers. After the third, after those two, we can rough. We don't have any club losers. We've got the ace here. And the diamond losers takes a bit of thinking about. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven diamonds. So the opponents have got six. So those are likely to be divided four, two. And if there are divided four, two, and if we don't have any trumps left in dummy, then we're likely to lose two tricks. So the answer to the question is five. We have five possible losers on this hand. Now, we're again, we're, we're not going to just draw all the opponent's trumps here, are we? Because we want to be able to rough um, one diamond in dummy. So we're going to try and keep a, a trump there. So if we can rough a diamond, then we will reduce our losers to just four. So 
that's our thought on this hand. If we can keep a trump in dummy, then we can rough a diamond and make our contract. So let's see how it goes. Let's suppose they start off with uh, a heart. They play another heart. And let's suppose they play a third heart. And we've got to decide what to do here. Um, we probably want to rough this. Um, I don't want to rough it with the ace because that will possibly cost a trick. But I'll try roughing with one of those medium spades. The eight here, west follows. So we've, we've done one rough. Now, let's suppose we start off by drawing trumps and we can start off uh, maybe with a king. And we were hoping when we played two rounds of trumps that they divided evenly and the queen and jack would drop, but they don't. We got that normal distribution. So there's still one trump out and it's the queen. And of course, what we're going to do is leave it out with the intention of keeping our five of spades in dummy so that we can rough a diamond. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave that last trump out and play diamonds. We might start off with the king of diamonds, cross over to the ace of diamonds. And because we need to rough a diamond, we're going to play another diamond. Um, unfortunately, West wins that. Well, we knew we were going to lose that anyway. And if you're West at this point and you've just won the 10 of diamonds, what do you think you should play here? Trump. Yeah, a trump, of course, because you, you could see what was going on. De Clara was um, left that last trump out, left the trump in dummy so that you can, uh, so that they can rough with it. But of course, you can spoil that plan by um, leading your last trump and getting rid of that five. So in fact, if I click on the GIB link, you'll see that's the only way to defeat the contract. Yes, of course, you will draw that last trump um, and now declare has got the nine of diamonds as a loser. They, uh, if you play another diamond, declare has to follow and then that's it. Declare will win the last one and draw, play the last two trumps, but they'll be held to eight tricks on that one. So that was an interesting one. Is there anything declare could have done about that? Let's look at this play again. Well, the idea is right that you want to um, keep a trump in dummy in order to rough, but you have to change the timing in which you do things because you're, you're going to have to lose a diamond here and it's a good idea to lose it early on so that you're in then in control of the diamond suit. So the way to play this is, again, assuming they start off with hearts, and you rough the third round. The way to play this is early on to play a diamond and give up that trick, okay? They'll win that one, but whatever they return, if they play another diamond, let's say, you can win that one with a king. Now you're gonna go back to your plan of drawing two rounds of trumps, hoping that the, they all fall, but they don't here. So the ace and the king win but that you leave that last high, high trump out and now you play the diamonds and the opponents can't get in now to draw your last trump. So you, you play the ace of diamonds. So the worst that will happen here when you play the ace of diamonds is it gets roughed with the, uh, with the opponent's last trump, but you don't care if that happens. Here it doesn't happen. So you play another diamond and you're able to rough that with the Five. And if that gets over up with a queen, that's fine. That was always going to win a trick, but you otherwise you've made an extra trick by roughing. So you win that one, and now you can just uh, force out the queen of spades and take your last two trump. So that was a, a similar idea to all the others that you hope to make an extra trick there by roughing a diamond and uh, and, and but you need to control the, uh, the diamond suit. So lose your diamond early on. And that's a very good principle. If you have to lose a trick, very often it's a good idea to lose it early on. Okay. Anyway, that was all it for today. Basically that's the idea of 
um, making a plan, trying to assess your likely losers and seeing if you can avoid any of those by roughing them in the shorthand. What I see a lot of people do on a hand like this, for example, is they do something else. They, they maybe sort of start roughing clubs. They, they, they play their clubs early and then they start roughing clubs. And although you can rough clubs, it does not gain you any extra tricks. Um, by roughing clubs, you're roughing in the long hand and that doesn't get you anywhere on this hand. It doesn't give you any extra tricks. So there are hands where you need to rough in both hands, but generally speaking, uh, roughing in the shorthand is, is the way to gain extra tricks. So we'll, we'll end the talk there. Does anyone have any questions about any of that? I also say uh, for anyone listening on YouTube to any of these talks, if you want to play in any of these games, do drop me a line and I'll send you an invitation if you want to uh, join in. But apart from that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen with you there and we'll start the game at 7.30. Um, if you need a partner, can you stay on the call here and unmute yourselves and speak up? Uh, the rest of you, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you at 7.30 on Railbridge. So goodbye, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yes. I need a partner, Tony. Who is that? Anthony. Anthony, yes. Anyone else? Ashwini. 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 I need a partner, Tony. And that's Sala. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? If if any of you want to play together, I've I played recently with Ashwini and with Sala. Could I maybe I can play with you, Anjani? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I'll be nervous to play with you, but oh, let no, me try. I'll be trying to be nice. <laughs> okay, sure. So maybe Ashwini and Sala, if you can play together. Yeah, okay. Okay. So if okay. there may be someone okay. else. I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Yeah. 15, okay, 20 I'll minutes. see you online. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.